Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And this video is going to be another explanation type of video. It's not going to be a full mission. If you saw my video that I did where we started off on the moon, then we dropped down to Earth and did that gravitational sling and then went off to Venus. Uh, hopefully you've already seen that video. And in that video I was explaining that I think multiple explanations are necessary to uh, really drive home the point of how to do any particular task, especially one like this that you would, that I would consider an advanced task. You know, this isn't just a simple, you know, earth to moon type of thing that you can kind of just, it, one example is probably good enough for something like that. But in this case, I think we need to see a couple of ways on how to do this. So we're starting here on the moon. And let me switch camera views here. We're starting here on the moon, and we're using uh, today's date, which is uh, Sunday, March 30th, 2014. That's the date that I'm recording this. And we're just going to go through uh, like we did before. Let me switch over to the larger NFTs because they show up better, better in the video playback. Now, again, I, I do hope that you've already seen the previous example so that uh, you, know, you have that information to go on. But let's bring up TransX on uh, both sides. And as before, we're going to escape the moon, then we're going to go forward, we're going to escape the earth, and then we're going to go forward, and we're going to pick where we're going to go, and in this case, it's going to be Mars. Now, remember that with the uh, default type of setup, you can't, uh, you can't just start adding in prograde. We, there's, there's an additional step here that we have to do, which is to you know, change the advanced and auto plan options, so we'll do that now. And the fastest way to do that here in stage three on view setup is just to go minus VR to advanced, turn that on, then press VAR twice to get over to auto plan and turn that off. Then we'll press VAR one more time to get the plan type. And in this case, cruise plan is what we want, so we don't need to change it. Then we'll press VAR again to go to plan, and we can toggle that over to eject. I actually made a set of notes on this. Uh, I'll try to, maybe I'll make these available, but that's everything that I just did is right there. You know, you just, uh, in stage one, you know, escape, go to stage two, escape, in stage three, you select whatever planet you want to go to, then minus VR to turn advanced on, press VAR twice to go to advanced, uh, auto plan and turn that off and so on. And I'll make these notes available. I'm, it's still a work in progress, but I'll make it available. All right, so once we have that, now we can press VW to get over to the eject plan, and we can start setting up our trip from Earth to Mars. Now, remember, we're on the moon, but in order to do this type of planning, we start the planning in the middle, work forward, and then we come back and do the last part. Uh, we come back and we do the first part of the flight last, so it's a little bit confusing because we're starting the planning in the middle. So we'll do here uh, what we did before, which is to switch over to the auto min. For the prograde and remember again that we're not doing any plane change in this flight it's very important that you don't have any plane change so you want zero plane change there is a way to incorporate plane change but it makes the flight quite a bit more complicated and we'll have to address that in a separate in a separate example so once you have prograde on uh, prograde set to auto minimum rather go to your eject date and then find a date that works for going to mars so we'll just go, go forward here let me go to rough setting just to speed things up. And we're just looking, you know, for one thing, we want this yellow perforated line to just be more, look more like a Haman transfer and not go way out into space like that. And then we're also looking, obviously, for these two lines to converge. And I don't know when that's going to be, so we'll just go around until it happens. And here things are coming together, maybe see what we have here so let's go down to a course setting let's actually go medium and then everything's coming down there it's, it's not looking too bad we might just go ahead and take this because I'm not worried about you know completing a full mission again and now it's starting to blow up as we which means our Delta V is going higher than it has to be so we'll we'll pick something a little better than this so let's go back to a uh, rough and let's go forward a little bit more let's see what we have over here Uh, this might be okay Delta V wise, but it's taking our flight out to you know that that's a long flight uh, It doesn't really matter again because I'm not gonna fly a full mission, but we'll pick something a little bit better than that even So we'll go around 
and we'll see what we have over here. Things are kind of coming together. Got a nice, clean sort of, you know, Hamann transfer style here. So we're not, you know, blowing way out into space and coming back in. Let's get on to a core setting. And yeah, we'll probably go with this. Got a reasonable time of flight. And now it's getting a little extended, but yeah, we'll take it. Well, maybe. <laughs> go back to medium here. Things kind of fell apart there. Yeah, we'll take this. Okay, so we'll get we'll get as good as we can on the closest approach here. And remember, we don't have any outward in here yet. So let's just get that at where we can. It looks like it's going to be about right there. So somewhere around 58245 is going to be our eject date. So the first thing we want to do before we worry about outward and anything else, let's go to the scenario editor and set our date accordingly. And remember, we want a date that's going to be 30 days prior to this date. And the reason we pick 30 days is because the moon takes 27.32 days to orbit the Earth one time. So we just kind of round that up to 30 days. So instead of 58245, we'll pick 58215. 58215, apply. Done with all that. Okay, now we'll work on our, now we'll work on refining our uh, closest approach here a little bit more. Let's, uh, let's go over to the outward and now turn on the auto min for outward. Now back to the date. And all we really need to do here, we can even go down to like a super setting. And by just tapping the date on the super setting a little bit, it's going to, it's going to, apply that outward and that's going to bring this closest approach way down just with a small change on the date in fact we could even go all the way to alter or even hyper so just tap the date a little bit you can see how much it came down just with one tap and that's because it's now using outward it just put in an additional negative 323 of outwards that's why we're getting a big change here with almost no date change just tapping the date a little bit more and again we're on a hyper setting so it's barely moving that date In fact, you can even go backwards and see how see how going forwards and then backwards, forwards and backwards. It it just because what it's doing is every time you click that button, the algorithm that Enjo wrote for this uh, auto minimization, it's it's rerunning that algorithm basically. So we go forward, backward, forward, backward, and it just keeps coming down. And then, again, well, this is good. You know, obviously we're slamming into Mars at this point. But uh, if you want, you can just keep going with it all the way down to a, you know, very, very low number like that. You know, now we're just almost at the core of Mars. So that's what we want. So now we're done with this side. We have, we have a configuration that would get us from Earth to Mars if we were to leave Earth at that date. But we have that problem where we're not on Earth, obviously. We're on the moon. Now... As I mentioned in the last video, you have to remember, if, and I use the, I'll use the same example I did before, if I'm the sun, you know, if my head is the sun and my fist is earth, and let's say the moon is here, it's this my, my pointer finger between the sun and the earth. If we, if we have that configuration, if we are on the moon here and we fall back to earth, What's going to happen is we're going to get to the far side of Earth, we're going to sling around Earth, and then we're going to come back out this way toward the sun, toward my face. So we need to make sure that when we leave the moon, the moon is actually over here. It's on the other side of Earth so that, that, so that when we drop back to Earth, we drop down, sling around the back side of Earth, and go out away from the sun. Because remember, Mars is obviously farther out into the solar system. When we went to Venus, we needed it to be we needed things to be the other way around. We needed the moon to be on the inside so that when we slung around Earth, we went back in toward the sun, but now we're going the other way. So we need to make sure that our our alignment is correct and so that we can go out into the solar system. Now, how do we do that? Well, uh, now we, that we have this part set up, we can start setting up the other part of our transects. So let's, uh, while we're here in stage one of view setup, it's not a bad idea to uh, go to uh, view, or rather while we're here in stage one, we can press view to get over to the escape plan and change the PE distance to what we want, which is going to be, you know, 20 kilometers. I'm not going to elaborate on that a lot. We'll just do it. 
because I've, ex I've explained that in so many videos. So 1758E3, that's saying that our orbital altitude around the moon is going to be 20 kilometers above the, sur above the surface. So now we want to go forward to stage two, and we need to get into the uh, view setup. And we have to do the same thing here that we did on this side, which is to change the auto plan and advanced options. And again, the fastest way to do that, if you press VAR, you're going to go around in this big circle. But just press minus VR, that takes you straight to advanced, turn that on, then press VAR twice, that takes you to auto plan, turn that off, then press VAR to get to plan type. And in this case, we actually have to change the plan type to initial, then we'll press VAR again to get to plan, and we want escape. Now I'm going to press VW to get to the escape plan, and we actually have a bit of an issue here. This happens from time to time where TransX, uh, for whatever reason, it doesn't draw the graphics. And unfortunately, I don't know how to f resolve that other than to just do a quick save and exit out. And then we'll just go right back in. So just bear with me while that loads. I, I don't know what causes that. It, it doesn't happen very often, but every now and then TransX just doesn't draw the graphics properly. Alright, so let's uh, check everything out here just to make sure that we have not lost anything. So we've got our eject plan over here. Closest approach still showing, you know, very low number there. So forward on this side, now you can see that we have our graphics back. And then we need that because if we can't see where the moon's position is at, then we, we can't set this up. Alright, now, this actually, this actually worked out pretty well. Um... Again, in order to in order to make this flight work, what we have to do, we have to leave the moon. Okay, the moon's currently right here. So let's think about this. If we left the moon right now, we would drop down to Earth. We would sling around Earth like that, and then we would go back out this way. What this is showing us here, uh, the way Dimitri explained it to me is pretty good. This line here is basically, if you could put a sign that said this way to Mars. That's what this line is showing you right here. So we're going to drop down from the moon, we're going to sling around Earth this way, and we're going to go this way to Mars. So that means in order for that to happen, we need the moon to be right here. We need it to be at the antipode position from the periapsis point at Earth. You can see we come down here, we reach the, our closest approach at Earth, and we sling back out this way. And in order to follow that flight path, uh, if you can tell if we were to leave the moon here, we would reach the we would reach Earth on that side. We would sling around and we would go out that way instead. So we need the moon to be over here when we leave the moon. And what we then need to know is, in order to uh, set this up, we need to know when is the moon going to be in that position, so that we can refine our eject date. Because right now our eject date is set for 30 days from right now. And right now the date is set at 58215. And I can tell you it's not going to take 30 days because that's, you know, our eject date is 30 days from, from now. And if we wait 30 days, the moon's going to go all the way around the Earth one time and it's going to be like over here somewhere. So what we really need to do is we need to leave, uh, we need to, it's only going to take the moon about seven days from this position to get over here. But we can refine, we can figure out a little bit better than just guessing seven days. And the way we do that is by going to, while we're in view setup, we change the variable over to uh, scale to view, and we go to uh, view target. And actually, there's one other thing I forgot to do. You'll notice here that the distance between the center of the Earth and our orbital altitude is pretty far out, so this is actually an important step. We need to change over to the view escape plan and set the PE distance to what we want it to be, which is going to be about 200 kilometers above the Earth's surface. And I'll show you why we have to do that, and I showed this in the last video, but I'll show it again. Watch this this position, the way these, the way these lines are shaped. When I switch over to the escape plan, and let me put in a different PE distance, let me put in something really high, like... Uh, like that. Now when I hit enter, watch what happens. Well, let me try that again. 
when I hit enter, watch what happens to the shape of this of these lines. Notice how much that changed. Of course, it changed a lot because I put in a really big number. But the point is that this the shape of this line will change depending on what your PE distance is at. So it's very important that you set that. And you want to set it to whatever you want your orbital altitude at Earth to be or your periapsis altitude to be. And 200 kilometers is easy because it's just, you know, 200 more than that. If you wanted to, you could go all the way down to 180. But we'll put it for 200. So 6571E3, enter, and notice that how much that shape changes. And it changed even a little bit over what it was by default, which was 7 point something. So it's very important that you, that you set your PE distance before you move on to that next step. And the next step is to uh, change your scale to view to target. Now I can see, you know, this is where I want it to be. Now the reason, again, that we uh, I like to have the view target up for a moment is so that we can see where the antipode position is going to be. Again, when we reach Earth's periapsis, this is going to be the lowest point right here. And if we follow across with the mouse cursor, kind of draw a straight line across, try to keep going, and we can see that the antipode position would be about right here. So like if we take this plus button as our visual indicator and imagine that this line continued all the way over here, it would end about maybe even up here a little bit. So then we can switch back over to craft or all, and we can just kind of remember that the opposite side of that point is about right here. So in other words, we need the moon which is right now here, we need the moon to be about right here when we leave. But what I like to do that's even better so we don't have to just kind of visually guess, if we go back to scale to view target and we use that line drawing tool that I talked about in the last few videos and I will again put a link to this in the description down below, it's free for this purpose. It's not a free program overall but it's free to use for this purpose. So we'll bring up the, the distance tool here, just click that and then we'll start in the middle, draw a line out, and I always overshoot a bit. Probably about like that. And I'm gonna draw, drag this line out the other side. And what I wanna do is I wanna make sure, basically, that this red line is completely covering that yellow line. So, and then again, in a perfect world, you won't see any yellow pixels at all. So we'll get it about like that. That's certainly good enough, but let's just do a bit more of an adjustment. And yeah, about like that, good enough. But you can see visually we were able to, you know, even without using the line drawing tool, I was, I, was pretty, I was pretty accurate. I said it would be, you know, toward the bottom of that plus and that's where it's at. But this, this tool is free so there's no reason not to use it in my opinion. So once we have that, we can switch back to scale to view target or scale to view craft. And we now have a line showing us exactly where the moon needs to be when, uh, when, we, when, when we leave the moon. So we don't have to just you know, yes, it's, it's, it needs to be exactly right here. But now we have to refine our eject date because remember, we are not going to leave the moon in 30 days. We're going to leave the moon when the moon gets to that position. And then we need an, an additional five days to uh, fall back to Earth. Now, this just happened to be a, about a 90 degree angle. It worked out just by dumb luck. If this was not a 90 degree angle, like it is now, like let's say the moon was back here, what I would tell you to do now would be to warp time forward until you got the moon to where it was at about at a 90 degree angle to that antipode position. It's not perfect, but it's really close. I can actually measure it. Uh, this tool is not part of the free set. I actually had to pay for it in order to get this tool, but I'll show you what I'm talking about as regards to the angle. So we'll put that line there. And we'll put that line there and it's 89.4 degrees so it's almost perfectly 90 degrees so what you would do for this step if the moon were anywhere else you know if it were up here or if it were over here or if it were over here you would want to warp time forward until the moon were at about a 90 degree angle to the antipode and remember that the the orbit is this direction it's uh, counterclockwise so if you if the moon was up here you know, yes, that's 90 degrees away, but it's 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 actually 270 because it's the other side. So you'd warp time forward until the moon was all the way over to this point. Now, I've also started working on a little sheet here. Hopefully this will help. I'll, and I'll make this available as well. So this can, uh, this will 
help you figure this out without doing any measurements or anything. So this is what I call the level one refinement. Uh, you want the moon to be 90 degrees from the antipode position. And when the moon is 90 degrees from the antipode position, uh, we say it's about seven days. But if we want to be a little bit more accurate, it's actually 6.8. So that means it's 11.8 days away from the eject point. So what can we do with that information? Let's come down here. So for the level one refinement, you need to fast forward time until the moon is about 90 degrees from the antipode position. And that's what it looks like, you know, just like we have here, 90 degrees away. Eyeball it as best you can or use the angle tool or use the angle measurement tool, but we just kind of eyeballed it here. And again, if you're off by a few degrees in either direction, it doesn't matter. Now at this point, the moon, uh, the eject date rather, is 11.8 days away from the current MJD. And why is it 11.8? And that's because it takes the moon uh, about 6.8 days to reach the antipode position from a 90 degree angle. And then we need an additional five days to fall back to Earth. So 6.8 plus 5 is 11.8. And if 6.8 is too hard to remember, just remember 7 days, it's close enough. So 7 plus 5 would be 12. So now our step is to look at the current MJD in the upper right, and then we want to uh, add 11.8 to that number. So we're going to take the current MJD, which is 58215, and we're going to add 11.8 to that number. And again, if you're doing this just like in your head, it's, it's, that's why it can be easier to use round numbers like 12, like 12 days. But let's go ahead and be a little bit more precise. Let's use the 11.8 figure. So we'll bring up a calculator. We'll go 58215.01 plus 11.8. So our new eject date is going to be 58226.81. So let me set that aside. So let's go ahead and set that, that date. Uh, we're already on course, which is fine because we're going to have to adjust the date by several days. So let's go. And notice when I change the date, what's going to happen is it gonna ch it's going to change the shape of this uh, trajectory a little bit. And that's why we're going to have to do another refinement. So let me just, uh, one second. Set the date back to 58226. See that's changing. It's changing a lot. Uh, it'll it'll get better actually once I adjust the uh, the other variables. Getting close to the two two six. All right. Let me actually go back to outward real quick and make sure it's set on auto min, and set prograde on auto min as well. Now I'll continue adjusting the date here. Okay, we want 226, about right here where we're at. Now we're going to go down to a uh, finer setting. And I'm just going to kind of go forward and backwards a bit, actually. Nope, just going to go backwards. Right there. Now, now that we have the eject date set to uh, 58226.8, which is about where, which is what we needed, we're going to have to come to uh, outward and check. And you'll notice that it's maxed out at 1,000. So we have no choice but to turn that off and do a manual setting. So we're, we're going to require more outward in this case. So we'll put in um, some additional outward to bring the closest approach down. And it looks like it's starting to go up. So now we'll go over to the uh, prograde. And we're going to have to turn that off of the auto minimization and start doing things manually. And see adding in some prograde's helping. Now it's going back up, so we'll switch back over to Outward. And we're just going to go back and forth between Outward and Prograde until we get our closest approach back down to where we need it to be. Okay, taking away a little bit more Outward. And we're basically home, or we're at Mars. Close. Let's take out. Let's do a little bit more refinement. And uh, it's a little bit more yet. Two hundred and that's still a pretty big number. Okay, it's coming down nicely now. And just a little bit more on the prograde. Let's get down to a finer setting yet. Now I'm kind of getting confused as to which direction it's helping, so I'm just going to find the lowest point, which is about right there. 
and let's start there. I'm, I'm making smaller adjustments now because we're getting in closer. Okay, there we go. That's helping. So let's go to 158. Back to the outward. And that's going to be good enough because, again, we're going to have to do some more refinement. So we're right there by, well, actually, that's not quite close enough. So let's just do a little bit more. And that's going to be good enough. Now we're right there by Mars. Okay. All right. So now we have now we have an eject date that is uh, twelve about twelve days from right now. It's we took uh, we took this number five eight two one five point oh one and we added to it the eleven point eight and that's how we came up with the eject date. But again, you'll notice when we did that and then we made the necessary adjustments to the outward and the prograde that it had a, a pretty significant change, a pretty significant effect on the shape of our uh, trajectory here. So we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to refine it. We're going to have to go and do another level of refinement in order to uh, get this in order to get this set up. And I will save that for the second part because we're not too far away from 30 minutes on this part of the video, so I'll just go ahead and end it here. Now, if you do find this, uh, this setup confusing, it, it's definitely an advanced task. This is not just Earth to Moon or Earth to Mars. This is a little bit more complicated. But if you are a long-term orbiter, you know, if you're somebody that has an interest in this beyond just playing with it for a weekend, then it's definitely something that you can figure out. I'm not a super intelligent person by any stretch of the imagination. So if I can figure this out, you can most certainly figure this out as well. It's just a matter of doing it, uh, going through the steps. And what I recommend, the way I kind of tend to learn things, is I go through the steps until I get to a point where things are just, I'm lost, where I feel lost and confused. Then I stop, I abort the plan, I restart Orbiter, and I start back from the beginning. Then I go through it again, and I usually get a little bit farther the second time. But when I reach a point where I'm lost and confused, I stop, exit orbiter, restart orbiter, and start over from the beginning. And the thing is, each time you do that, you, you, what happens is you memorize, you memorize new steps. So the first few steps, you just whiz through them. Whereas when, you, when you're first starting, even the first two or three steps are really complicated. But the, you know, as you go through things and you do it a second time and a third time and a fourth time, you know, it's like spatial recognition. You start to memorize things because you're, you're repeating it over and over. I think it also helps tremendously if you take notes. So especially on the parts that are just like blah, blah, blah to you that you just don't even understand at all, definitely take notes on those points. Uh, the things that you know really well, like at the very beginning where we're just going escape, forward, escape, forward, and then selecting Mars, you probably don't need notes on that if you're familiar with Transex. But um, maybe when you go over and start setting up the advanced on and auto plan off, maybe that stuff's new to you. So if so then maybe jot down some notes on exactly what to do. Uh, especially because when you put things down for two or three months and then you come back to it later, you will have completely forgotten everything. So it helps a lot to take notes along the way. So that's going to wrap it up for this part of the video. If you liked the video, like the video. If you didn't like the video, don't like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. Check for links in the description down below, and I will see you in the next part. Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And this video is going to be another explanation type of video. It's not going to be a full mission. If you saw my video that I did where we started off on the moon, then we dropped down to Earth and did that gravitational sling and then went off to Venus. Uh, hopefully you've already seen that video. And in that video I was explaining that I think multiple explanations are necessary to uh, really drive home the point of how to do any particular task, especially one like this that you would, that I would consider an advanced task. You know, this isn't just a simple, you know, earth to moon type of thing that you can kind of just, it, one example is probably good enough for something like that. But in this case, I think we need to see a couple of ways on how to do this. So we're starting here on the moon. And let me switch camera views here up here that we have to do which is to you know change the advanced and auto plan option so we'll do that now and the fastest way to do that here in stage three on view setup is just to go minus vr to advanced turn that on then press var twice to get over to auto plan and turn that off then we'll press var one more time to get the plan type and in this case cruise plans what we want so we don't need to change it 
then we'll press VAR again to go to plan and we can toggle that over to eject. I actually made a set of notes on this. Uh, I'll try to, maybe I'll make these available, but that's everything that I just did is right there. You know, you just, uh, in stage one, you know, escape, go to stage two, escape, in stage three, you select whatever planet you want to go to, then minus VR to turn advanced on, press VAR twice to go to advanced, uh, auto plan and turn that off and so on. And I'll make these notes available. I'm, it's still a work in progress, but I'll make set to auto minimum rather. Go to your eject date and then find a date that works for going to Mars. So we'll just go forward here. Let me go to rough setting just to speed things up. And we're just looking, you know, for one thing, we want this yellow perforated line to just be more, look more like a Haman transfer and not go way out into space like that. And then we're also looking, obviously, for these two lines to converge. And I don't know when that's going to be, so we'll just go around until it happens. And here things are coming together. Maybe. Let's see what we have here. So let's go down to a course setting. Let's actually go medium. And then everything's coming down there. It's not, it's not looking too bad. We might just go ahead and take this because I'm not worried about, you know, completing a full mission again. And now it's starting to blow up as we... Which means our Delta V is going higher than it has to be, so we'll get available. All right, so once we have that, now we can press VW to get over to the eject plan. And we can start setting up our trip from Earth to Mars. Now remember, we're on the moon. But in order to do this type of planning, we start the planning in the middle, work forward, and then we come back and do the last part. Uh, we come back and we do the first part of the flight last. So it's a little bit confusing because we're starting the planning in the middle. So we'll do here uh, what we did before, which is to switch over to the auto min for the prograde. And remember again that we're not doing any plane change in this flight. It's very important that you don't have any plane change. So you want zero plane change. There is a way to incorporate plane change, but it makes the flight quite a bit more complicated. And we'll have to address that in a separate, in a separate example. So once you have prograde on, uh, prograde, we're starting here on the moon and we're using uh, today's date, which is uh, Sunday, March 30th, 2014. That's the date that I'm recording this. And we're just going to go through uh, like we did before. Let me switch over to the larger MFDs because they show up better, better in the video playback. Now, again, I, I do hope that you've already seen the previous example so that, uh, you know, you have that information to go on. But let's bring up TransX on uh, both sides. And as before, we're going to escape the moon. Then we're going to go forward. We're going to escape the Earth. And then we're going to go forward. And we're going to pick where we're going to go. And in this case, it's going to be Mars. Now, remember that with the uh, default type of setup, you can't uh, you can't just start adding in prograde. There's there's an additional step.